who says you can't go home again? Almost no one at this point, we guess. You don't need bachelorette spoilers to tell you that the star heading back to the towns in which her suitors grew up is one of the best slash most intense slash most interesting episodes each season. We'll start with Becca's visit to Parker, Colorado, as she became the first woman Colton ever took to meet his parents. Following last week's shocking virginity announcement, Kufrin feared that Colton was too inexperienced and not ready for a commitment. Her fears weren't exactly alleviated after his dad basically begged Becca not to choose his son unless she was positive he was the one. This same parent also grilled her about her honesty regarding her engagement to Ariel Uyendik Jr., making things extra awkward and uncomfortable. Still, Becca felt optimistic when she left Colton because he told her he was in love with her. But then things took a surprising turn when Becca got back to Los Angeles. With ABC apparently aware that most viewers have found this season very boring, producers asked Tia pulled Becca aside and confessed that she still had feelings for Colton. Despite having previously told Kufrin that she and Colton scarcely went on a couple dates, Tia now claimed it made her nauseous to think of her quasi ex receiving Becca's final rose. With this admission to ponder, it was off to Bailey, Colorado, where Blake showed Becca around his high school and recalled how a school shooting that occurred when he was a senior changed his outlook on life. Yikes, huh? Heady stuff. Then, Blake surprised Becca with a concert in the auditorium by her favorite singer, Betty Who. The internet was impressed. Go Blake. As for Blake's family, they were mostly supportive of his romance with Becca, although his mom worried about him going through yet another heartbreak after a previous breakup almost made him give up on love in general. However, Becca's feelings for Blake only grew after meeting his relatives, as she raved about seeing him and his family in her life forever and ever. How would frontrunner Garrett Yurigoyen compete with all this? First, by introducing Becca to his family's agriculture business in his hometown of Manteca, California. Spending so much time outdoors caused Becca think again of how Garrett reminded her of her father, which is both sweet and sort of weird. Becca was hesitant about meeting Garrett's family, aware of the damage the suitor's ex-wife had done and how protective his family would be as a result. And they certainly were aggressive, making it clear that Garrett had been through a difficult ordeal in that relationship. The Bachelorette Final for 2018 Still, Garrett felt like he had his family's blessings to get engaged, which may very well happen, based on these The Bachelorette spoilers, and Becca felt very positive after this visit. Finally, it was time to jet across the country and go see Jason in Buffalo. Becca expressed her disappointment during last week's installment that this New York native had been guarded about how he was feeling. How dare he not be totally open and sure after having known Becca for a few weeks and only dated her in front of television cameras. Jason, who believed his relationship with Becca had surpassed those of his competitors, but didn't want to say anything he didn't mean, had a revelation, though. The two spent some quality time with Jason's family and, at the urging of his brother, Jason did at last declare his love for Kufrin. It was about time, dude. So, with all four men totally in love with the bachelorette, who did she send packing? Who would remain to head to Pound Town next week in the fantasy suites? Considering Tia's confession earlier, and how Colton actually asked Chris Harrison whether sex in said suite was mandatory, Becca had no choice. Citing his dad's request as the reason why she couldn't take him any further, Kufrin refused to take Colton's V-card or to take him any further on her journey. Underwood did not get a rose. Jason, Blake, and Garrett did. Who will win it all?